Hey everybody, I'm ML7 and we have some massive Overwatch 2 news. January 24, 2023, a new patch just dropped. This is apparently the mid-season patch that happened, what, a couple of weeks before uh, season 2 is over. But let's see what changes we got. A new patch is now live, blah, 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 blah. Here go updates. Tank Orisa, fortify. Health bonus reduced from 125 to 75. Now, hear me out, hear me out. This is good, and this is unexpected, okay? Orisa recently has been very unkillable, and the fact that they're reducing the amount of health bonus that you get from Fortify is good. This is a good nerf. I like it. I wasn't expecting it, and I think that this might balance her out a little bit. I still think that she needs some tuning with her cooldowns and stuff, because you can rotate them too well, but she's definitely more killable than she was before. Like what, 50 HP? It's okay. It is okay. It applies on her ultimate as well, exactly, because, like, when you use your ultimate, you go in fortify mode, you know? So, she's also, like, squishier in her ultimate. I'm just, I'm just saying that increasing the cooldowns for her rotations might be better. Roadhog. Now, this is, this is the topic of this entire patch, I feel like. The Roadhog problem, chat. This is what everybody has been talking about, and they've been talking about, like, rework of Roadhog. Is this the rework? Chain hook. Impact damage reduced from 30 to 5. This means that the hog hook does 5 damage, exactly as much as Ana Sleep Dog does. The enemy final position distance from Roadhog after being pulled increased from 3 to 4 meters. You know what this means? This means that they addressed the biggest issue that Roadhog had, which, is the ab which was the ability to one-shot as a tank. And the ability to one-shot overall. Now, if you hook somebody... You should, in theory, survive. I think that that's the purpose of this. Because when you get hooked, you're going to be a little bit further away from him. Which, if you're a support, you're playing Ana, you get hooked, you can nade, you can sleep him. If you're Kiku, you can TP out, you can Suzu. You have, like, some options of surviving if you get hooked instead of being instantly dead. Now, how much this increases, though, from 3 to 4 meters com combined... Uh, with the scrap gun buffs and stuff, we have to wait and see if this is sufficient. But 25 damage less on the hook, good. 3 to 4 meters, interesting solution, honestly. Interesting solution. Scrap gun, damage per pellet reduced from 6.6 .6 to 6. So he does even less damage. Recovery time reduced from 0 0.85 to 0 0.8. This means, if I'm correct, that he can shoot a little bit faster. Reload time reduced from 2 to 1.75 seconds, so he reloads faster. And maximum ammo increased from 5 to 6. So he has more bullets. Developer comments. Okay, I want to see this. I want to see this. These changes aim to reduce the frustration of dying in one shot immediately after being hooked and pulled by Roadhog. Right now what you can do, what we did here at Blizzard Corporation, is the possibility of getting hooked and then dying immediately after two shots. Chain Hook is still a powerful utility to forcibly reposition enemy players, so it will still often lead to eliminations. Its effectiveness will now be more depending on dependent on specific hero matchups and how the hook target is able to respond. So, hear me out. I think that this is a very smart solution to the big problem, which was the fact that Roha can one-shot. But I do have to be honest with you. To me, at least, this doesn't feel like a, like a rework. And I hope that's not something that they have scrapped. Because from what I remember, they mentioned that they want to rework Roadhog. And what I'm suspecting is maybe they need more time to do so. This is just like some numbers being changed. I think that in theory, you can survive getting hooked. Especially if you're playing like a 200 HP target. If you're playing a 250 HP target, you definitely can. I want to see how big the distance is from 3 to 4 meters. And this gives you... The following thing. I'm going to give you a secret tip, by the way. Whenever you get hooked by Godhawk, I always say press crouch, okay? So he can maybe miss some pellets. Definitely do that. If you get hooked by Godhawk, press crouch. So he can miss, like, more and more shots on you. And you have a possibility of surviving. Maybe the support can heal you up. Maybe you can TP out. Maybe you can use abilities. You have a lot of stuff to do. Damage soldier. Now, this one's going to be interesting. Railgun. <clears throat> Energy gain is no longer based on damage done by primary fire. Okay, each primary fire hit against an enemy player now grants 5 energy. Primary fire damage per projectile reduced from 10 to 9. So wait, let me, let me read the developer comment and let's comment on this. 
Okay, because you remember what I said earlier? This is actually a soldier nerf, but more of a mercy damage boost nerf than a soldier nerf. Developer comments. The energy gain adjustments... <clears throat> Here at Blizzard Entertainment, we have done some buffs and nerfs. The energy gain adjustment will help smooth out Sojourn's average railgun charge time because it won't benefit as much from critical damage or damage boost abilities. Hitting armored targets, which are easier to hit, or other sources of damage reduction will result in quicker energy gains than before. You see the problem? Previously... Damage boosts and critical damage had an amplified effect for Sojourn, so you don't have to land headshots anymore. Since it reduced the time to build energy and lowered the threshold at which her railgun secondary fire became lethal. The reduction to primary fire damage will further slow that down as well. This feels like a change. Tailored towards... I don't want to say casual players. Towards like, I don't play a good soldier. And this is why I don't want to say casual players. Towards players that want to learn soldier and want to play soldier and to get more value out of her. Okay? Because this way it's going to be easier. I don't have to land headshots. I don't need damage boost. I just shoot the tank and I get five charge per shot. Five charge per shot. Okay? And... She still remains unchanged with this. She still remains... She does a little bit damage per shot, though. She remains unchanged with the fact that when you shoot the railgun, you still can one-shot if you get damage boosted, right? What this means is that you can rail... You can get your charge up faster, and it doesn't matter... Two consequences. You get your charge up faster, okay? Because it's easier to shoot the tank, okay? Very easy. Does the flat... Does flat damage, five energy. I mean, you gain five energy. And secondly, you don't need damage boost to charge it faster, you get it so much faster on shields, you get it so much faster on Torbjorn Target, you get it so much faster on so much faster on the tank. I think that this actually might be a bit of a, a buff. Not against shields. Okay, so what I wanted to say is that right now, if you damage boost the Sojourn, you probably will increase this primary fire damage per projectile, but you will not help her get railgun faster. So actually the value of your damage boosting a sojourn decreases, which is an indirect nerf to Mercy in this case, because Mercy thrives not through her healing, but with her damage boost. What are we going to enter? An era in which she's not going to get value out of damage boost almost at all? You know what I mean? Like it's 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 it sets a tricky precedent. And at the same time, in my opinion, it makes Sojourn a little bit easier to play. Kiriko Healing of Fuda. Recovery time increased from 0 0.85 to 1 second. Despite Kiriko's healing projectiles being slow moving in single target, her average healing output per match is higher than we'd like. Yes, she heals kind of a lot, I'll be honest with you. We've seen players tend to get overly focused on maximizing her healing potential and only use primary fire for extended periods of time. Okay. That is because it is almost impossible to land uh, the Kunai Blizzard. Not necessarily because it's better to heal, but because with how fast, how slow the projectile travels, it feels kind of clunky. Rather than reduce the amount of healing per projectile, which may lead to feeling locked into focusing on primary fire even more, understandable, we're increasing the recovery time before she can start firing the healing of Uda. Increasing recovery time opens the opportunity to weave in secondary fire Kunai more freely. Okay, so... I'm going to do a visual representation of how Kiriko feels right now, okay? I explained this in my video, the Kiriko goals, called the Kirithum. Right now with Kiriko, you can throw one kunai and then heal. So you heal, kunai, heal, kunai, heal, kunai. What this means is that I assume you have time to throw two kunai before your Ofuda's charge up. So you throw, you heal, kunai, kunai, heal, kunai, kunai, heal, kunai, kunai. This still, by the way, doesn't fix her primary issue with uh, Kiriko that we've been talking about for a very long time. You know what's the primary issue? The primary issue is the fact not that she doesn't have time to throw the knives in. Not the fact that she, uh, she, has, she needs like more kunai. The problem that Kiriko has and why she doesn't feel that fun to play for some people is the fact that the travel speed of the knife is too slow. It's like... If they would increase either the fire rate of how much she's shooting, or how fast she's shooting, or how fast the kunai travels, she would feel way better, way more fluid, and a lot of people would play her a lot more. Honestly, I had a very difficult time trying to get adjusted to her, uh, to her kunai. Hey, 
I'm Olaf. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe. Meow.